So it's been a little while since I've done a, any kind of a video update on this car, so I'm going to bring you up to speed. So, I recently finished welding in the engine bay metal. So here what I've done is I have a 67 radiators, uh, radiator support. So this is going to allow me to run the 67, 68 big block 24 inch wide radiator. And the idea is, here is to get more cooling without having to cut up the original 65, 66 radiator support. And to the untrained eye, this will look completely factory. So I don't want to have to do too much fabrication work. And it actually fits fits really well. It doesn't really require much effort. Uh, the distance between the frame rails is practically the same from 65 all the way up to 70. So it fits between the frame rails no, with no issues. The only places where, where things are a little bit different, obviously, is where it meets the, the front fender aprons on both sides. So on this side, there's a whole bunch of excess material that you don't need, which is really simple. Um, you, just, you just mark where you're going to cut it and, and just cut it off. There's a little bit of an extra piece right here on a 65-66 radiator support, but I didn't bother with leaving that because that extra piece doesn't really do anything other than probably, uh, probably just here to probably prevent stress cracking in this area. So maybe later I might, I might add a little bit, bit of a piece there just to bridge that gap and so I don't have a weak point right here but I don't think that'll be an issue these are Dynacorn one piece fender aprons uh, now although the stamping was a very high quality I did have an issue with where they were spot welded together because this isn't actually one continuous piece that's just stamped it's the rear and the front aprons spot welded together and the problem with getting you know, getting parts that are already pre-welded together is that they they generally aren't welded together exactly right. So I had to go ahead and cut these spot welds out. Just drilled them out really quick and it allowed me to go ahead and align everything correctly. I saved, you can see right here, I saved the original VIN stamps from the original aprons and grafted them into the new ones. I have the, I have the Torque, torque box gussets just sort of clamped in place. I'm going to weld those in at some point, and that's not really a huge priority. The, the Dynacorn aprons met up really well with the firewall. Uh, not so much with the, with the bolt holes for the, uh, for, the, for, the shock, for the shock cover, but that's not really too big of an issue because I'm planning to go with an independent front suspension that eliminates the shock towers, so I'm not going to need these holes anyway. So at some point these shock towers are going to come out. The only reason I left them in here was to help with, with installing these, installing these new fender aprons. On the passenger side here, you may notice uh, this is a, the the train die may notice that this is a a not a 65 oh, a 65 66 battery apron. So what I've done here is actually the top portion here from about here all the way to the front is a 65 66 apron, and then this area here I cut out a Dynacorn 67 68 replacement battery apron, and I grafted those two together. So this one met with the with the 67 radiator support. There's also excess metal here that you don't need because the 67 68 uh, whereas these these fenders attach on the inside here, the 67, 68 fenders attach with a, with sort of a bracket uh, that's spot welded to the inside of the headlight bucket that attaches right here. So you have a couple of bolt holes right here on this extra bit of metal that I didn't need, so I just cut those out. Uh, if I had used the 66 battery apron, it would have been sticking out here, so I would have had to add more metal to make it to make it fit, but. That wouldn't have been a big deal, but I wanted to go with the 67 one. That way, I can run the big block radiator, and I don't have the I don't have the battery sticking out this way, getting in the way of that radiator. So, all this is done. This is ready to go. Uh, I got measurements from a Mustang guy, so from that from that little uh, pressed from that pressed little little body line right there on the cowl to right here to the very front edge of this 44 and a quarter inches and I was able to get it dead on both sides so this is exactly the way it needs to be I test fit the hood a few times everything lines up pretty nicely uh, this particular fender is one of the originals that came on the car I do have 
this fender does have some issues. Like I got, uh, from what I understand, this this splitting is kind of common, especially when the when the headlight bucket tabs break uh, up here where they're known to break, and then the extra extra motion is can, uh, can split these fenders up here. But this ought to be really simple to just clean it up and weld it back together. That's no big deal. Uh, there is there is some old bondo on these fenders, so. Uh, not not a whole lot. This fender wasn't in too bad shape, so this 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 fender will at some point get cleaned up completely. I'll take it down to bare metal, and I'll try to fix the any dents that are on it with a hammer and dolly, so I can use as little uh, body filler as I can as I can manage. Right now, I'm working on the driver's side fender, which I have removed. This is not a, a fender that's original to the car, but it is an original Ford fender. So. This one is the original fender. You can see right he, right in here. There's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of accident damage in here. This this one was crumpled up pretty good. Someone tried to sort of straighten this thing out, uh, but they didn't. I mean, it would have been impossible to straighten this thing out. There's a lot of bondo right here. If you look at it on the back side, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's quite a bit of damage in there. So. They used, uh, you can see some spots where Bondo is poking through. So they use the old body, body man trick of putting a screw in it and using the slide hammer to pull that back out. And they smoothed it over with some Bondo on top. And it, it, it just requires way more work than it's worth. So I will not be using this fender, but I will be using a piece of it because this fender also had some Mondo, which I already removed most of it. You can still see some of it there. But it was covering this, atro uh, this uh, atrocity. That's just terrible. So, yeah, I don't know if this was rusted or if this was maybe also damaged in an accident in the car it came, it came off of. And they tried to fix it and they just sort of got it where it needed to be. And just put some Mondo over it to, to smooth it out. Yeah, it was also some sort of a weld repair on, on the back side. Which wasn't done very well, so you notice neither of these of these fenders have their headlight buckets because this is the original headlight bucket to this fender, and they they cut out a, a big chunk of it to to get to that area that they quote unquote repaired uh, that they welded on the back side here. So what I'm going to do, I have this marked off with tape because I'm going to cut out this section from this fender, and I'm going to cut out a, a similar section from this one and weld that in there because this one is in much better shape so there's a there's only about two or three little spots like right here where there was some there was some deeper bondo and and uh, but hammer and dolly ought to take care of that mostly uh, so this will get these this will get cut out and it will replace this piece and let's see where'd I where'd I put it this is the headlight bucket from my original fender. This one, you can see spots like right here in the back where that, that's also been damaged because this was on this, on that fender when it was in the accident. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this top corner out of here and graft that into the, into this one right here. So this one's also missing one of the, one of the headlight bucket nut plates so so that's all well and good because this, this one is here so when I when I cut out this section and graft it into here I'll replace that I'll replace that that little nut plate while I'm at it so that's what I'm doing right now I'm really determined to avoid using reproduction fenders just because I don't want to mess with those they uh, they have a reputation for not fitting very well and if I'm gonna have to do body work and welding I might as well do it to an original set, uh, set of fenders as opposed to buying a reproduction set and have to do that anyway. So other than that, not much more is going on. I have a quarter skin right here that I'm going to use a portion of it to replace this rusted portion right here. I have the original front valence to the car. This is going to require some, some body work as well because you see right here where it's where it's been damaged. Uh, this this should be straight, just like that 
that side is straight along here, but hammer and dolly, and I'll, I'll do what I can because same thing with these with these front valences, the reproductions just don't fit the way they're supposed to. So I have a more or less good valence right here. It's not rusted; it's just dented. So I'll do what I can. I'll see what I, uh, see what I can do. I ought to be able to get it looking pretty good with my modest skills. So that's where it sits right now. I have a few odds and ends to take care of. Like uh, I, le I left a portion of the 6566 apron right here because it has this bracket that that the uh, that the fender bolts to. But I'm gonna have to move this bracket. It's set too far back. So I'm gonna have to cut the spot welds on that and move it up here a little bit. I'll probably fit the fit the valence and get a stone guard a stone deflector to put up here as well, so I can get these parts sort of fit together, so I can make sure that this that this fender is where it's supposed to be before I before I cut the spot welds on this and probably move it up to to meet that because I don't want to just toss some spacers in there. Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to toss spacers anyway because then then the fender splash shield wouldn't fit because there's two different splash shields in in the in the fender well area. There's one that goes in the back and one that bolts up to the front here. That's what these that's what these three holes are for. These uh, some coarse thread screws just go through here, and there's a there's a metal piece with some rubber that's that's stapled around it, and that protects this area back here uh, on the back side rather uh, from uh, splash and from water and stuff like that. So because of these big areas where I have all this daylight, I'm going to have to figure something out to protect this area. Uh, but I'll just uh, I'll just do that as uh, as it comes. But other than that, everything's looking pretty good. Yeah. Uh, pretty much at this point, the car's ready to go on the rotisserie. So I took the rotisserie out of the box. It's all it's all sitting right there. Uh, uh, this this engine. This engine I got out at the local pick and pull out of a '94 Mustang GT. Turned over real nice. Uh, pulled the heads. It was cross hatching all the cylinders. No, uh, uh, no ridges from the rings on the top of the on the top of the cylinders. Very good condition block. Uh, that box has all the rotating assembly in it. The pistons and and rods and there's the crank and the camshaft. So I do have a friend who's gonna who has a. 289 out of a 66 Mustang. He said I could. He said I could have it. I just have to have to go get it. Uh, that's over in Oklahoma. So I may I may keep this engine and may maybe just build it back back up and maybe put it in that car. We'll see how that goes. So that one that car needs more power. So yeah, maybe maybe I'll do that. We'll see how that goes. But for now, it's fender time. Alright, I'll be sure to keep you all updated. Thanks for watching.